بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه My brothers and sisters in Islam السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته I'd like to welcome you all here and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept our deeds Today insha'Allah well we reached last week the point of where خلص يعني now I'm going to talk about what comes after the barzakh life but I can't do that until I talk about the end of this world in general. And this will be our topic today. And we'll reach the point where the world has ended and what is the state which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in. And next week, inshallah, we'll talk about the resurrection and what's beyond that, what happens. Ahwal yawm al qiyamah. The miseries and the blisses of the Day of Judgment. My brothers and sisters in Islam, Just as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala began this creation, He will end this creation so that all of it can go into the day of judgment. If anyone doesn't believe in the day of judgment, it is as though you are saying that Allah created us for no reason, no particular purpose, or no valuable purpose. The people who sinned and killed and harmed, they get off the hook. And the people who strived and struggled and did good, they did it for nothing. And these are one of the reasons that those who don't believe in the hereafter, I think this is one of the reasons why they commit suicide. When they lose all their wealth, or they lose their loved ones, or their job, and they feel that they've got no future. When they lose all connection with life, they commit suicide. One of the main reasons is because they, didn't ha- they do not have a belief, an iman, in a life after here. And therefore they don't, know, they don't know why they're here. And so they can create their own purpose. A lot of them create their own purpose. And some of the purposes they create is family. I'm here for my family. That's a small purpose of life. But that's not the whole purpose of why you're here on earth. Because if that was the whole purpose then Allah will keep us living forever here. Why is there death? Why does Allah take members of the family before... And it's strange how some people say, before their time. What does that mean? He went before his time. It's as though we knew when everyone's going to die. What do you mean before his time? Death has no age. And this life is not paradise. And we're not meant to stay here. We are here for a different reason. We are here to grow our here after. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us and He will judge us in the hereafter because He is the just one. He knows where we're going to be, but we don't know where we're going to be. So in order that we don't argue with God on the day of judgment, Allah says, you can go through the life and see it for yourself. And on the day of judgment, your whole life will be reversed. You will see yourself from the moment you died, you will see everything going backwards. You're living and it's all, you're reliving the moments until you are a baby. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saves you from that so you can stay alive. So you don't return back until nothingness. You see it all. Forwards and then backwards. Everything. And so people who deny their hands and their feet and their eyes and their ears and all of that will bear witness that you did it. There is no running away on that day. But before that day comes, there are signs. And it's quite unusual that some people, they say, I didn't have a sign before I died. Everyone has a sign before they died. Die. Everyone. Everyone. But these signs are different. They come in various forms. Some people have immediate signs of death before they die, such as illness, such as even spiritual feelings. Others, they don't have any of these signs. It just hits them like that. But the signs I'm talking about is time. Time. As time progresses, 
as you grow in age, you're actually getting smaller in age. Every minute that we grow, we're actually getting, our life is getting shorter. And therefore, time is one of the signs. Age is another. White hair is another. Wrinkles. And the Prophet ﷺ said, everything has a cure, except for two things. Everything has a cure. لِكُلِّ دَاءٍ دَوَاءٍ Every illness has a cure. If you find it, he'll be cured. Except for two things. الموت والهرم Death and age, old age. You can't reverse it. All those commercials you see on television about Nivea and this cream or that cream. I don't know their names, but you know. All these creams telling you because you know your life and they put these women and men up there as though they have this really fresh skin. That, that's, that's a lie. It's, they're just deceiving you. There's no cure for old age. The other signs of the world's end, my dear brothers and sisters, are literal signs that the Prophet ﷺ told us. When I say literal, meaning they are real. But their descriptions are really unknown to us in, 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 in detail. But there are actual things that are going to happen ev- that, that will be shared by everyone. So there's specific signs for yourself and there are common signs for everyone else. They are the signs of the last hour. I'm not going to go through them in detail today because that's not our topic. But I'm just going to go through it focusing on the world's end. We're talking about the hereafter. This world ending shows us that when Allah says that everything's going to die, it means everything in this world, including the world itself. Allah says in the Quran, كُلُّ مَنْ عَلَيْهَا فَانْ وَيَبْقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ Everything on it will perish. The only thing that will be left is your Lord. The presence of your Lord. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in several verses that the world and the sky will perish. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, الدنيا فانية The world is going to perish. A man asked him again, when is the last hour? He said, don't ask about that. What have you prepared for it? But the point is, they're asking because the Prophet had told them, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the world's going to end. Allah says, يَوْمَ تُبَدَّلُ الْأَرْضُ غَيْرَ الْأَرْضِ وَالسَّمَاوَاتِ the earth, the world, and the sky will be changed. From the world and the sky you knew once to another world and sky. Meaning Allah is going to destroy it and recreate another. Different to it. Destroy it, make another one. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He replies to those who deny the end and resurrection. By saying, look at the life that you live in now. So Allah SWT says, look at the way we created the life as an example of why, how we are going to resurrect you. Look at how he sends winds and clouds as a good sign for you of mercy. So you can have water, so you can grow your crops and eat. When the clouds fill up, we take it to a land that is dead. Land that has no crops, nothing. It's dry, drought. And from it, we bring back life of fruits. كذلك, just like that, Allah says, كذلك, just like that or similar to that, we will raise the dead people. I say to, Allah says, I say this to you in the hope that you may remember and reflect. So there are many signs or ayat of this. And Allah says, كَلَّا لَتُبْعَثُنَّ Behold, you shall be resurrected. The signs are many. There are minor signs and major signs. As for the minor signs, 
They began when? Who knows when they began? The minor signs of the closeness of the world's end. The death of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Naam, his death. So that's 1,437 years ago now. To us it seems a long time. But I want to say two things. If you're 10 years old, 30 years old, 40, 50, 60, you know, in your mind, you know it was a long time ago. But how do you feel? You feel like it was only yesterday. Isn't that right? 60 years, 100 years, it feels like just yesterday. In your mind, you know it was a long time ago. But feeling, it's only a little bit. If you lived for a thousand years, wallahi, it's going to feel the same. There's a narration about Nuh alayhi salam. He lived for a thousand and about 150 or up to 1,350 years. Different narrations, but more than a thousand years. And on his deathbed, the people asked him, how, did you, how do you feel living all this long time? And he says, it's like, he said, it's like a person opened a door, took a step to the other side and then closed the door. And he's trying to say that, it's, you don't even feel it. It just passes like that. So whether you're now or in 30 years' time, it's the same thing. You're going to feel the same as now. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, The day of accountability has come very close to the people while the people are in, are in an illusion of their own. غفلة, they're forgetful of it. They're too busy to away from it. يلعبون, they're playing. They're playing around. Allah says, Do you not consider that when the day comes, it may come to you while you are playing, or while you are just in غفلة, forgetfulness, or unaware. So when the world ends, brothers and sisters, it will be a time where the majority of the people of the world are going to be in losthood, forgetfulness. Ghafla, meaning unaware. Too busy with imaginations and illusions and things, ideas they've made up. People will be busy in their world of music. Why do I say music? Because the music has an extraordinary effect on the mind and the heart. People listen to it to get out of misery and sadness and get out of the reality of life. But it doesn't take them towards good. It doesn't take them towards God. It doesn't take them towards the Qur'an. It doesn't take them towards going and doing you know, good deeds. They'll just do what the song tells them to do. If it's love, they'll live love. If it tells them about death, they'll probably commit suicide. If it tells them about Satanism, they'll go and worship Satan. Whatever the song tells them, they start living it. Some people are living in a world of money, so they try to bring up all this money and try to live in it. They're in that ghafla. They want to forget about death, so they're busy with luxury, entertainment, and all of that stuff. And others are busy with other things, addicted to drugs, addicted to desires of their own. The point is, Allah says, the last hour will come when people are in that ghafla. They're, too, they're busy with some type of illusion in this world that makes them unaware of why they're here. That's a temporary... And Allah says in the Qur'an about these types of people to the Prophet wasallam, when the Prophet tried to call them and, and teach them and he would tell them, please listen to me, I want to save you. And, and a lot of them wouldn't listen. Allah has said to him the following verses. فَذَرْهُمْ يَأْكُنُوا وَيَتَمَتَّعُوا وَيُلْهِهِمُ الْأَمَلِ فَسَوْفَ يَعْلَمُونَ Let them, let them eat and let them entertain themselves and let them play and let false hope delude them. And let their hopes of whatever their ideas are, let it delude them. Let it take over their minds for a little temporary while. فَسَوْفَ يَعْلَمُونَ At the end of it, they're soon going to come to know the reality. It's going to face them. It's going to grab them, it's going to face them right in the face. And they can't run away from it. So Allah says, let them eat, let them drink, let them entertain themselves, let them play, let them be in their losthood, whoever they are. Let them... Uh, and what Allah says, وَيُلْهِهِمُ الْأَمَلِ And let hope 
busy them. What's hope? Hope is good in Islam. Allah tells us, have good hope in Allah, have good hope in His mercy. Well, that's not the hope that the Qur'an is talking about. Saying, let hope, meaning, they've made up their ideas. They don't want to learn, they don't want to hear about heaven and hell, they don't want to hear about death, they don't want to hear about God. They don't want to... It's talking about those who follow their desires, and so they begin to fill, or they begin to inter- or fill their, their, their life with busyness of other things. Hope for, let's say, I don't know, to be rich in the future. Hope to... Um, uh, be this or be that or receive this or receive that in this world hope to live longer hope to just keep going yani, let me give you an example I'm sitting in this room one time and there in a work area and I hear this person he says oh you know look yeah, talking. I'm going, we're going to retire you know, you're, he's talking about retirement and superannuation and all that stuff subhanallah what is it, probably about 40 years old, saying, you know, can't wait, you know, the retirement, when we're 60 years old, then we retire. And he goes, it's scary. And then, and then you know, they were talking about it and saying things like, oh, but, you know, but, you know life expectancy is you know, 70, 80 years old if you're healthy. So that's you know, another 20 years or 25 years more after retirement. That's a long time, you know, you get to... And this person is having this hope where he doesn't even know what's going to happen to him tomorrow. Allah says, let hope delude them. Yani, don't practice your deen. Don't come to, uh, closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Keep in with your, with your fo- bad desires because you have this false hope that you're still going to live for longer. Later on you'll repent. Later on you'll become a good person. Later on you'll, you'll busy yourself with all these things. Later on, later on. For now, you're still young. They're still young. وَيُلْهِهِمُ amal. This is what it means. Let, you know, this hope of, oh, you're going to still live longer later on, later on, later on. Let that busy them. And really, wallahi, it's just a busyness. The shaitan is just busying these people. How many people, death came to them like that while they still had that hope at the age of 20, the age of 30, the age of 15? And they're still saying, when I'm 70, when I'm 80. And there's this cultural idea in my culture, I don't know about your culture, that hajj should be done when you're 60 or 50 or 70. What's this? How do you know you're going to live till then? Hajj is compulsory. At any time, like any other compulsory act. Like your prayers, like your fasting. So the minor signs in this world come to people while they are in ghafla. And these are one of the minor signs. That people begin to drift off. And Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, people will begin to busy themselves with story, um, uh, imaginative stories. And imaginative, imaginative tales. And they begin to make up imaginative tales to the point where people will begin to question if there is an existence of a God. That's a hadith. What does this mean? Really, look at our state today. A lot of people, I mean, the movie industry is growing huge. Now people are burning CDs and movies, and there are more and more. I mean, don't ask the Muslims, ask non Muslim experts who talk about. The lifestyle of people these days. Look at it. People are more inside of home than outside. Children are more on the television than outside getting physical. Ask your parents how physical they used to be outside and now it's more indoors in front of that TV. LCD screens are getting bigger and bigger. Plasma TVs, you can see it. People are focusing on the quality of what they want to see and hear. You go out to the store and you don't know what to buy. You think I'm going to spend $300 on a TV and you end up spending $4,000. Why? Because this TV has a slightly better picture than this TV. Or this TV has got a slightly higher resolution than this TV. What I'm trying to say is that one of the minor signs of the last hour is that this world of entertainment, this illusion that we want to live in, has become a priority in a lot of people's lives. Really. Am I wrong? So inside, this, this world of illusion. And the TV has become the world of illusion. And then they want all the nice stereo system around them. The ones, the little tweeters that get, and the ones that bring out the other noises, they get, as if you're living in there. They want to live outside of the realm of this world. They want to get out of this world. It's true. And they want to live outside of this world. They don't want to live in it. It's another form of intoxication, if you like, but on a smaller scale. Now, if you can monitor it and manage it, it's okay, inshallah. I'm not telling you to be a, one of those Muslims who, um, 
don't think I'm weird now, but I'm telling you that use it in a halal way, but try and don't be extravagant. And I just want you to realize that it can really get people addicted to all these things. They're running away from this world. And we are getting into that hope of illusions. And when you watch these people, these people who are watching all these movies and everything, movies are now dictating what people think and believe. I mean, I've heard young people say to me, this is a new form of counseling which I have to know. I've never counseled this way before, Wallahi. And it's only in the past year. Students and young people telling me, what if there is another world? What if there is another reality? What if? What if? They don't know what they're talking about. But these imaginations, especially in movies, have made people think about other things that could possibly... And so they make up their imagination. And so long as they know that other people are thinking like them, they think, yeah, there's a possibility. It's nice to think like that. It's nice to think that when we die, we become ghosts and we just roam around the world. It's nice. You know, we're just a ghost and then you walk towards the end of the, the tunnel, there's a light there and, and, par- and there's heaven on the clouds and all those things. And, um, I don't know, Lord of the Rings and... and um, I don't know, Sixth Sense and uh, I don't know, you name it, all these other imaginations. The world of the zombies. <clears throat> Reincarnation and so on. So these are the minor signs. And now, even some, a lot of people are questioning whether there really is a God. Subhanallah. My brothers and sisters in Islam, among the, I'm just mentioning the most you know, significant minor signs that we are encountering now, and a lot of us are living it and we don't even realize it. Another minor signs is that, just in general, the balance, there is an imbalance in the whole world, imbalance in societies, imbalance in morals, imbalance in ideologies and methodologies, imbalance in nature, like imbalance in environment. You could see it. Global warming is one of them. But on a more subtle scale, the imbalance of our morals. Look at it. Look at how much shame has lost its value. And it's all about, it depends how you look at it, they say. I see it this way, you see it that way. I see that marrying a dog and calling it my wife is a normal thing. You see it as not good, that's okay, we can still be friends. Yeah, okay, you can still be friends. But what's this? Are we human beings or what are we now anymore? The other day this person, I said to him, look, we're human beings and we exist. Then he goes to me, hold on, how do you know we actually exist? How do you know we exist? And he comes up with these theories. Alhamdulillah. We ask Allah to keep us sane. Then you got people who believe that wearing clothes only should be when you're cold. Or when you're sick. Or just to look good. Otherwise you should take them off. And they think that we're crazy for wearing clothes. Because God created us naked. Look at this insanity. Then they have homosexuals. A few years back, the world looked negatively against homosexuals. What's happened now in the past 10 years? They think you're the crazy one if you speak against it. You're, the, you're crazy, you, not them. You. You've got a psychological problem. The other day I, was, uh, I heard about, I mean, someone was telling me about this um, Miss Universe, I think, America, US, was she from the US, Miss Universe? How do you know? Okay, Miss Universe. And uh, she was saying, she was asked about homosexuals, gay people. And she said, I think it's unnatural. Yeah, tabloids, papers, everything went against her. Miss Universe says they're unnatural. She's got to, she, she has to go back and, and, and um, retrieve what she said. And she came up and said, look, I, if, if I want, you want me to respect your values, you've got to respect mine. And anyway... Your own president agrees with what I'm saying, Obama. President Obama also said in front of the public that I don't agree with homosexuality, it's unnatural. But look at the world. It's like you're crazy now. 
the role of men and women have completely changed. I'm not talking about men helping women or women helping men. I'm talking about complete transformation. Complete transformation. The children take their friends closer to their hearts than their own father. This is one of the hadiths. The girl grows up and the boy to feel like they are the masters of their mother and their father, but especially the mother. Rasulullah The woman gives birth to her to her master, girl or master boy, because the woman is the mother is weaker, and so they boss her around. Disobedience of parents in rage. Alhamdulillah, among the Muslims, it's not. It's getting worse, but it's not that bad as much as those who are who don't have a way of life at all. The religion of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. They burn their parents, beat their parents up. I swear by Almighty Allah Subhanahu wa Taala that only about. If I'm not lying, I'm trying to be um, precise here. About a week and a half ago, I receive a phone call from a Muslim who tells me, um, I want to kill my brother because he keeps beating my mother up every time he comes in. 40-year-old, 37, 38-year-old um, animal who comes in and beats his mother up. The other day she said he poured four liters of orange juice on her head when she was asleep. Because he's sick and tired of caring for you. So he's meant to be her carer. And he's getting paid. He's getting paid from the government to be her carer. And she says, he's my son. I don't want to put an intervention order on him. I don't want him to go into prison. Bruises on her legs, on her body from this son. And he said to her the other day, I can't wait until you die. So what's left? For Rasul Sallallahu told us about these signs. He said, Last I will not come until children will begin to, children as in older ones, will begin to curse their own parents. Among the minor signs as well is that the trustworthy people are no longer trusted and the untrustworthy people are given positions of responsibility and the people are placed in their hands. The liar is believed and the believer is the liar. We live in a world of absolute confusion, brothers and sisters. Rasul said, where the, where the truth seems false and the false seems truth and you don't know what's what. When Muslims fight each other, and he said, when that day comes, avoid them both. Even if you have to live alone on a mountain, surviving on roots of trees. Fitan. Basically, lots and lots of confusion and mischief, morally ideologically and physically. And he said, Rasul as if you are standing in a dark night and there are dark clouds above you, you don't know what it holds. And then he said, The person wakes up in the morning a believer and in the evening he's a disbeliever. Goes in the evening a believer and in the morning he's a disbeliever. In other words, Rasul is telling us that people lose their faith immediately, very quickly. And we see this happening now, with the internet getting more and more famous and popular, and people's communication can be a good thing, but the communication has caused people who ever had a doubt in their head, they find that thousands, millions of other people have got the same doubt, and they feel more comfortable with that doubt afterwards. And for example, a lot of youngsters who... I don't want to. I don't want to give. Bad, I don't want to give bad examples because we have youngsters here. But the point is, um, because of this global communication, the majority of the people have used it in a bad way, in a very bad way, and have become addicted to things that we could never have become addicted to a few years back before the internet came. Addictions to to, to lust, addictions, like real addictions, like like drugs and alcohol. They don't want it. They know it's bad, it's ruining their life, but they can't stop it. And it's happening now. And the youngsters are becoming sodomites. There's a Muslim gay society in America now, and in London, and there's one that's just developed in Sydney, and a Muslim lawyer woman defended them to establish a Muslim gay organization. I don't know what they're called, but they're in Sydney. And slowly in Melbourne now... I don't like talking about it because, you know, the, the, the notion that people start getting ideas, but it's become so bad. Everyone knows about it. 
But the point is, that's what's happening. The minor signs are becoming flourishing. Is there a God? Is Islam really the right way? Of course it is. But ignorance has become so bad. Rasul Sallallahu told us when ignorance will be everywhere and the scholars will die more and more. Right to the point where the final end of these signs, minor and major, is that the Qur'an itself will be lifted off the earth. It will no longer be in the hearts or the minds. The hadith of Rasul Sallallahu That the Qur'an is lifted out from all the pages. All the, if there is still internet, then it will be out of there. Out of the pages, out of the minds. And it won't be taken away like you've memorized then it will be taken away. No. It's with the deaths. Death happens and next generation does not practice the Qur'an. And when you don't practice it, you don't memorize it. You probably memorize it, but you'll forget it. Why? The Qur'an is not there to memorize like a cocky. Because you'll let go of it like that straight away. The Qur'an is memorized in practice. And that's how you remember it. Even if you don't know much of the Qur'an, once you practice its meanings, you'll always refer back to the Qur'an. And so the Qur'an will be gone. Because people will long, no longer refer to it anymore. Now, Rasul Sallallahu told us, there will come a time among the minor signs is that people will say, will reject hadiths. And they'll only accept the Qur'an. They'll say, between you and I is the Qur'an. If it's in there, I'll take it. If it's not in there, I don't believe it. He said this hadith. And then what's going to happen after that? Then the Qur'an will be rejected. Now the hadith, which is the, our second of the primary sources, then the first of the primary sources, which is the Qur'an, will also be gone. Look at us today. We find in the Muslim homes, alhamdulillah, there's a lot of children who memorize. But do we put it in practice? Do we teach them its meaning? Alhamdulillah, send them off to Pakistan, good. Hey, send them off to India to memorize the Qur'an, okay, good. But memorization without understanding will benefit nothing. Many of them came back. And where are they? I don't want to say. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, He sent the Qur'an down to guide. Among the minor signs is that there will be people who will falsely claim that they're prophets. It's today, everywhere. The latest one that I know of is the Mormons, John Smith. He lives in America. He's meant to be a prophet. Why is he a prophet? Well, he wrote a book. <laughs> he wrote a book. That make, makes him a prophet. And he has all good things in there. Um, and many others. There was these other prophets. That, and he, anyone can make a religion up. I guarantee every one of you over here, if you want to make a lot of money, and you don't fear Allah, you want to, you want to do that, every one of you here has an opportunity to make millions. Just make up an idea and publicize it, and you'll have followers. You will have followers. Wallah, you'll have followers. <laughs> anything, just make up anything. Alhamdulillah, we've already got followers of uh, those who worship the cow, those who worship the sun, those who worship uh, Satan, those who worship men. There are those who worship human, the, the genitals of, of human beings as well. There are those who worship the ants and the insects. and They worship whatever. And you can have your own followers. This a uh, few years back, they put on the news of this man who said he's a prophet. He made uh, poor, miserable youth lives gone. They committed suicide, waiting for aliens to come and take them. <laughs> or they're waiting for aliens. They go, you have to suicide, you have to wait in this room. They've got their luggage ready. Remember that one? And the aliens are going to come and take them. <laughs> Where are they going to take them? I don't know. The minor signs continue. When the major signs come, the minor signs are still going. And the minor signs are getting worse and worse. To the point where the Prophet ﷺ said, ignorance will be so bad that the knowledge of Islam will be so little that the Muslims who have any knowledge will remember one word. La ilaha illallah. Hafiduha an abin anjad. They learnt it off their ancestors. Of their fathers and forefathers. And it may be not very long ago. Maybe second or third generation. But they learnt it off their father and, and, and grandparents. And the companion said, Ya Rasulullah. And what will this do for them? Just the word, La ilaha illallah. No practices. They don't know how to pray. They don't know how to read the Quran. Nothing. Just La ilaha illallah. But they know its meaning. Yani, tawheed. He said, Tunjihim min nar Tunjihim min nar Tunjihim min He said, it, was, it will save them from the fire. Three times he said it. The point is that there will come a time when the Muslims will be so ignorant. Yet, uh, if you hold on to that one word properly you'll still enter Jannah. So this is an indication that a Muslim follows quality, not 
not quantity. Because of the lack of time, I'll just go briefly on some of the major signs. Next week, inshallah, we'll continue them. But some of these major signs, just very quickly, that will happen is that the world will get into a, a huge battle, a huge world war, other than the World War I and World War II. Some scholars in, in assume that World War I and II were those, but the descriptions don't fit it, because it will be a fight purely between Muslims and the Christians, which is probably a good, reasonable argument that World War I was that, because it was really between the Europeans and the Muslims. It was the drop of the Khilaf, the Ottoman Khilaf, the Uthmaniyya which was a Muslim Khilafah. And they, it, it, they lost it. But the signs of the battle that I'm talking about is that the Muslims win it. So, Allahu Alam. And it could be that World War I started and, this, and, the, and the, this battle is continuing till today until the day comes when Muslims will be victorious. Only Allah knows. Or it could mean that the big battles will come in one time. And the Prophet ﷺ said, تَتَدَاعَ عَلَيْكُمُ الْأُمَمْ the nations of the world will gather against you. Just like beasts gather to strip an animal, to eat it away. And they fight for it. They asked him, a messenger of God, are we going to be a small amount that time? Is that why they'll all gather against us? Uh, you are many, but like the bubbles that result from a wave that hits the shore. They asked why. He said, because your hearts begin to cling to the world and hate to die in the cause of God. And we find this today, that the nations have gathered. At the moment we are in an ideological war, but there will also be a physical war to come. Nuclear weapons are not made for nothing. They are made to be used. And they were used before, and they're going to be used again. My brothers and sisters will continue, inshallah, next week. Jazakumullahu khair. Hada wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Walhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.